Hello and welcome back to another AI guide. Today I'll be covering the general settings of the program and a couple of helpful tips for finding things on Civitai. To start with, we'll go to the Create Art tab. The first two you should be familiar with. Prompt, describe what you want to see. And negative prompt, describe what you don't. We'll take a look at Add Image. You can upload one from your computer or you can also copy an image you've made and paste it. This is used to change your image. You will notice a morph strength all the way up to one will give you a completely new composition. Um, if you put it down to point one, you would mostly get things like color change, lighting, shadows, keeping your image hardly changed. If we go a step further here, we have match pose. This is good for, say, I wanted to get a completely different Viking, or I wanted to make him a woman, or maybe I wanted to make it a robot, but I really liked his stance. You can use match pose. This one would just match where the face and body is. Some of these will draw, like say, an outline to match it entirely, but then you could fill it in with something different. So I could have the exact same shape of hair and body, but then you know, I, instead of skin, he could be ro like metallic. Um, these are called control nets, and we will get into those in a future video. Then we have our extras, which is your loras that you may have downloaded and dragged into your folder, or maybe you downloaded them from here. Then we have our settings. We have aspect ratio, and we can take a look at that easily through this. You have your standard 512 by 512 then you can adjust it and you'll see you can get different resolutions that might be great for a desktop background or all the way up for a phone background. Um, when you download a model or LoRa from Civitai, sometimes they will recommend a specific aspect ratio as that is what the aspect ratio of the training data was and you'll likely get better images. So it's worth paying attention to that image count is how many images you want to see that one is self-explanatory and now thanks to a recent update you don't have to set this at all you can click the generate continuous button generate continuously sorry and it will just go until you stop it while it's generating you can also edit settings and prompts that will be updated in live time then we have our prompt strength determines how closely to follow your prompt the default is seven. This is usually pretty good. Um, if you were to put it at one, it would probably ignore you almost entirely. If you put it at 25, you'll it won't really take any creative liberties. You'll only get what you prompted for. I would never recommend going that high um, unless you're very, very detailed in your description of the image. It just won't come out nice. A good amount is seven, which is the default. If you need a little bit of extra help, say it keeps ignoring a specific aspect and you've made sure you're not over prompting, then eight or nine can work. If you wanted to take some creative liberties, but still have the general idea, five and six are great for that. Then you have generation steps, determines detail at the cost of speed. Um, that one is, you know, the more steps the AI takes, the more it can go over and add little things like dots, lights, shadows. It's not always necessary to crank this to get a clear image. Most of my images are generated at 12 steps with the Juggernaut model. Some models um, that I've heard of, I haven't tried them, say they can generate very clear images between four to eight steps. Uh, 12 is good for Juggernaut. I had one before um, that pretty much needed 20 steps to get good images, so you can play around with that. We have our seed. The seed removes a randomness from an image. You can copy a seed from one you've generated, and if you put it there, it will try to rebuild it the same way it built this. If you were to put the same seed in the exact same prompt, say you copy it all from here, you will get the exact same image. Then we have samplers. This is the way the AI builds the image. Um, I'm not too familiar with exactly how it works. I will have to research more on that. All I know is that many people have done comparisons. And for the most part, I would say there's not much of a difference with what you use. 
there seems to be a couple outliers, but otherwise just experiment, um, really just have fun with it. I've heard some people say Euler A is only good for anime and you can't do realism on it. I disagree. All of my realism in painting is done with Euler A. Most of the time, I stick to this one, DPM++ 2M Keras, as I find it to be the fastest. Then we have your VAE. You can leave that as automatic. I wouldn't put none. Um, you're likely to get washed out images without a VAE. And then we have realistic faces. I highly, highly recommend turning this on for faces. You can still get very, very good ones without this, and this may sometimes clash with certain lores, but 90% of the time, this will make a world of difference if you are generating people. Then we have the upscaler. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the other tab for that. So in the other tab, you have edit, and you also have upscale. There are different upscalers. They do not all work the same you will get some wildly different results with different upscalers. Um, I would definitely recommend playing around. My personal favorites are the R ESRGAN. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to say that. That one is my personal favorite most of the time, or just nearest, as that won't change your image too much during upscaling. Then you have your upscale amount, which is the resolution of the image. So make it double as large, make it three times as large, four times as large, which will give you obviously much more detail. And then you have HD upscale, which will wildly change your image. I'm still not 100% sure how this works. I haven't had good luck with this. Um, I uh, HD upscaled a T-Rex once at like the lowest possible strength and it turned him into a Rottweiler. Um, I don't know what the reason for that is, but I don't use this. I'm sure maybe it will be improved in the future. Then we have our bread and butter. This tab here is your most important tab for getting consistent images. Instead of having to regen an image over and over, you can bring it into inpainting. And what inpainting is, is you can mask an area of an image and you can change just the area you masked. This will take a second. We can look at the log here. So you can prompt in specific things, like say I wanted it to be a woman's face, or I wanted him to look more evil, or you can just prompt nothing and roll the dice and see what it gives you. While I'm generating, I typically open the log in the top right as I like to watch the progress. As you can see, it doesn't take too long. Estimate of 28 seconds to start with. It only took, ended up taking 14 in total. Um, you can also combo Laura's with this. If you have a Laura, say Asuna, which is a character from, I believe, Sword Art Online, you could highlight someone's face and turn her to Asuna. Now, this did not uh, come out great, but you get the idea change it without editing the whole image. This is how you will get good images every single time. I never generate until I get lucky. I take any old broken image I have and I slowly fix it. This way I get what I want to see every single time. It is a game changer. And then we have the same settings as you've seen on the other page. So more strength again would be how much it changes. So if I were to put that way down, it would hardly change at all. Also, the lower the morph strength, the faster it will be. As you can see, that finished instantly in about two seconds, and it hardly changed his face. Just a bit of lighting, maybe shadows. It does look better. And if you find one you like better, you can update, and you can just go again. You don't have to stop. You can highlight different things like hair, um, you know, whatever. Sometimes if you're not getting what you want or you have a specific image, you could do like sunglasses and just put them on them. Be careful not to prompt too much with the in painting as you got to understand you are prompting just for your covered image. So for something like this, say I wanted just his eyes to change, but I did something like Viking 
eyes uh, king, trying to make him look kingly. It might try to shove a little viking into this spot, or like a whole face. So you would want to just do viking eyes, evil eyes, kingly eyes. Don't try to describe something that isn't actually in your bubble. For negative prompts on this, <coughs> I typically stick with none within painting for the most part, or I stick with the negative embedding that works with the model I am using to just cover some basic mistakes. And then if I need to, say I've selected this hand over and over, trying to change it and it won't let me, maybe eventually I'll throw a bad hands in there. Or if it's putting rings that I don't want, I will put jewelry or, you know, etc. Then we have, you know, the download models and the download extras. Mine runs pretty slow, but if you click into this, you should, oh, there we go. So this is where you can download your models. That is like my juggernaut. This is the, this is what goes in this slot. And then the extras are tiny little add-ons that go into the extra slot. Just to cover a few other things, if you have a good enough computer, there's also a switch for SDXL. And over here, you'll see there's a Discord button, share button, the log, which I've already drawn your attention to. It will give you ideas of what's going on. It might spit out error problems. And it also gives you a convenient little progress to watch. And then you have your settings, where your models are located, where your lores and other extras are located, where your VR VAEs are located and your output images. Your output images will be these. Anytime you generate one of these images, it will go to that output folder. Just so you know, even if you delete this here, it is still in your output folder, so don't worry. You can go and recover it if you didn't mean to do that. The rest is performance. <coughs> good If you have a good PC, I, I'm assuming you can run on high. I run on medium. If you have a slightly worse PC than this, I would definitely recommend low because I am just breaking the surface of being able to use that. Compatibility mode, if you hover it over it, it says enable this if your outputs look fuzzy or pixelated. Um, this does work wonders. Sometimes you'll run into a problem where your image looks perfect and then you upscale it and it's very jagged around the edges, very torn. Um, and enabling that will very often help with that problem. Now that's going to be it for those general settings. Let's just take a quick look at Civitai and how to easily find stuff. Let's go ahead and type anime. You can filter highest rated and I would highly recommend. My computer is so slow. If you are using SDXL, you can check that. If you are using just the base version like me, you can check SD 1.5. Look for Loras. Look for. Um, you can look for upscalers if you want to try a different one. If you've gotten to that point, um, different embeddings like textual embeddings from my other video, um, and then you can just go from there. There's also categories, actions, animals, assets, etc. Um, and that's an easy way to find them. When you do find one you like, say this line art Laura. You simply download it and drag and drop it into that folder from before, which I will show you once more where that is in a moment. But I highly, highly recommend you always read the settings. Um, if a Laura was trained on a specific model, you're likely to get better results using that model. It'll recommend the Laura strength, which is this. That's how strong the LoRa is, how much it will affect your image, um, how many steps they use, which is, you know, generation steps. And ours is called prompt strength, but you will often see it called CFG or CFG scale. Just remember that for us, that is called prompt strength. Some negative embeddings that work well with it, etc. It's also not a bad idea to always look at an example image and you'll get ideas of what they prompted to get a similar image yourself, as well as their seed if you want to copy it more exact, um, what sampler they used, their prompt strength, etc. 
So that'll be all for today. In the next video, I will cover a few more in-depth tips for prompting, prompting weights, in painting, and how to get crisp, clear, perfect images the first try and not have to spend all day generating. Thanks for watching.